Hello, my name is Pappy Bedard, and in this tutorial, I would like to show you how you can change or modify any of the icons throughout the Cinema 4D user interface. Now you may ask, why would I want to do that? Well, in my case, I have a fairly good reason. I have a problem seeing red, especially when it's up against gray because I'm colorblind, a little bit. So over here in this object manager, there are these two little dots that are commonly known as traffic lights. They, the top one indicates whether the object is visible in the editor, and the bottom one indicates whether it's visible in the render, renderer. So right now, the way cube one is set, is it's uh, the default, which is gray in the editor, and it's green, meaning it's visible in the renderer. And on the other object, cube, uh, its default is visible in the editor, and its visible in renderer is off. I really can't tell the difference between those two. So I want to fix that. And I'm going to show you how I did it. The first thing I have to do is close Cinema 4D. Uh, then I have to browse into the location and program files. I'm working on a PC here, folks. I don't know about Macs. Uh, program files and find the version of Cinema 4D you have. And then from there, drill down into resource, modules, C4D plugin, icons. In there, there's two interesting files I want to explain. So let me open this one just with a simple preview. Notice that's every icon in the interface. And then the other one is this text file, which I'll just open with Notepad. So hopefully those are on the screen here. So what this interface icons text is, is a list of all the names of the icons you see here at the right. Now let me go ahead and zoom way in so you can get a sense of how this is arranged. The first one is called vertical tags. That's that icon. Second one is layers. And it just goes on like that in sequence. There are 50 icons per row. So this icon right here, the second one down on the left, should be line 50. Uh, let me go find line 50 here. So here's line 50. It's called shear. Oh, that would be the last one on the first line. The next one, 51, is taper. So that's the first one on the second line. So I've got that highlighted. The second one on the second line, you can see down here, line 52 is twist, followed by stage, microphone, loudspeaker, and so on. So if you really want to know what these icons are, you can just look in this text file and you'll see the names. Now, one thing I need to warn you about is every so often in this text file, let me scroll down till I can find one, you will see a line that begins with this little squiggly line, like that one. What you have to do is skip those, like they don't even exist. So wherever this invert uh, icon is, on line 301, so that's about the sixth line down, I don't know. There may be a couple of other uh, of these ignore lines in there. But anyways, ignoring the ones with the little squiggly line, they're exactly in order, row by row by row. So this is a TIFF file, which is editable in Photoshop. 
So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to close these. And now in order to do this, I do not want to destroy this original by any means because there's going to be no way to, to recover it. So I'm going to start by just copying it. All right, so now I have a copy of it. So I can get back to that. In fact, I'm just going to rename this. Instead of uh, copy, I'm going to call it original. That way, if I ever need to get back to it, I can. Now, this one here, I'm going to drag to the desktop, edit it there, and then copy it back. So I'm going to drag it to my desktop, copy it, and then I'm going to open it with Adobe Photoshop. So there we are. Now, I need to find the traffic light icons. Well, I have spent some time with this and I've figured out where they are. They're about halfway down on the right hand side, somewhere right in here. So it's just going to keep zooming in and you will see them. So there's the X and the check. That's the green light. That's the red light. That's the gray light or the gray. I want to change this red one because I can't see it well. I'm going to just keep zooming in here and I'm going to change it so that I can see it much better. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to choose this line tool. I'm going to make the fill black. I'm going to make the weight three. And I'm going to add a line right across here. And add a line right across here. I should be able to see that now. Yeah, so that's going to be on, off, and default. I'm going to select these layers and flatten them. And then hit File, Save. Oh, it says it can't save it. Now, that's because this thing is probably read-only. Yes, it is. So I'm going to turn off the read-only so I can save it. File, save. Okay. That file is now saved. I can close this now. And I'm going to copy it from the desktop back into this directory. And replace the file in the destination. Give it permission to do that. Now I'm going to open up Cinema 4D again. OK. And I will open that same project. OK, now it's very obvious. I can see that the cube one is off for rendering and cube is off for rendering. I can also see that cube one is always on for editor and it's uh, default. The cube is default for, rend for uh, editor. Anyways, that's it. And just like I did that, you could change any other icon to any way you want, whatever you want it to look like. You could even change the colors of them. You could change the vibrancy. You can use any Photoshop filter to make it look really funky. Uh, but I just needed to do it for that because I couldn't see that red versus gray. And that is the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.